As treasurer of Chicago, I manage about an $8 billion portfolio that we invest um, on behalf of the people of Chicago. It's uh, predominantly fixed income investments and uh, traditionally these have been short-term investments, kind of cash management strategies and since I took office a few years ago we really expanded the quality of the portfolio and the rigor of our analysis and the complexity of the portfolio. Well, I think as we built the muscle of um, being more sophisticated investors and having and investing in talent and investing in technology, what we realized was there are a host of factors uh, in the universe that can and should be incorporated into our investment decisions beyond the traditional fundamental credit analysis or market timing and liquidity issues, but really looking at, you know, the factors that can give real indication of risk and uh, quality of returns, quality of cash flows, and ultimately improve uh, our position as, as fiduciaries. So as we, as we built the, that muscle and we said, well, we've got great talent, we're, we've got a more sophisticated process, we've got uh, access to far better technology now, um, uh, it would be an absolution of our fiduciary duty not to incorporate ESG factors because they have a real impact on the investment. We spent the better part of the last year and a half evaluating uh, every data source out there. Some have been around for some, some time and some have sort of become new to the marketplace, but, but what we've seen with the collection of the universe that's out there, of data that's available, there's nearly 900 different individual factors and considerations that can uh, be a part of a single investment decision, a single credit decision, a single decision to buy a, a security. We've evaluated all of them and we've evaluated every data provider. We've, we've evaluated their weightings and, and what we've decided was uh, that we're gonna, we're gonna input all of this data into a single proprietary database and model to, uh, to have our own ESG score for every security that we evaluate. At the end of this quarter, when, we, when we've fully implemented uh, this new policy and this new investment policy statement uh, into our portfolio, every holding in our portfolio will receive a notification of our new process and every factor that we're evaluating for them as an investment in their sector, in their industry, what they will uh, also be aware of is that um, our process will require us to take the same measures that we would with a fundamental credit analysis. So today, if a company goes from investment grade to non-investment grade, we can't sustainably hold them in our portfolio. And so we have a period of time per our investment policy statement where we can remedy that. Otherwise, we have to responsibly divest. Uh, the same will be the case uh, for those who move from investment grade to below investment grade on, on uh, ESG. So we did reach out to uh, several of them in different sectors and in different ways. Uh, and in some cases, you know, they have industry or trade associations that we, we sort of spoke with, and it was helpful to do so, so that there's common understanding. There, there are a lot of myths when uh, institutional investors begin to pursue incorporation of ESG strategies. Some believe, you know, this is just a divestment uh, strategy, which I think is a less sophisticated, almost blunt instrument um, a, approach to it. and. Uh, you know, we can do better than that. We had to face some of those reactions or folks really want to know, does this mean um, that's the only thing that you consider? No, it's, it's one of several considerations that we have, including fundamental credit analysis and market pricing and timing and, and duration and what we believe with, is going to happen with rate sensitivity, but it is an equal consideration and folks need to be aware of that. And so I think that dialogue was very helpful to sort of um, uh, provide information and, uh, and eliminate the likelihood of 
misinterpreting what we're doing here. We looked at cybersecurity or data breaches as a great example of going through all of these ESG factors and saying, well, yes, technically a data breach uh, or a lack of cybersecurity is a governance issue, and so it falls under ESG, but it's fundamentally a credit issue. It puts the creditors at risk and the equity holders at risk. It puts the cash flows at risk. It puts the future of, those, of the company and their consumers at risk and we've seen that and we've seen that play out in the marketplace we also saw that that data was available a year in advance and that knowledgeable investors who were incorporating that data and incorporating that fact would be eyes wide open in making that investment decision so yes it falls under g and esg but it's fu it's fundamental to us making that investment decision and it was a great example for why we felt compelled to fully incorporate ESG factors in every single uh, investment and uh, across 100% of the portfolio. Success is ultimately measured by uh, risk-adjusted return. I'm a fiduciary, I was elected by the people of Chicago, um, and it's easy in this case because fundamentally, you know, I believe that ESG has a direct impact on both the risk of an investment, but also help you realize a greater return. They're, they're, they're directly linked, which is you know, why I'm comfortable saying you, you'll see it in, uh, in risk-adjusted return.